The Seeker's Guide to Twisted Taverns is coming together. We got a card game, we got cards, we have official cover art now that I might have actually fallen in love with, we have 17 full taverns, we have the best art, we have two plushies, look at them so soft and plushy you simply must buy, a hundred random modular room encounters with unique treasures, a deep lore mystery hunt because I like Gravity Falls and secret meta reasons for stuff, and a lot more. It's been an incredibly fun project with so many different dimensions to it, and I can't wait to launch so I can have this stuff in my hands. Grab it if you can, no pressure, but if you don't, I am gonna come to your house and stare at you silently for about an hour. The link is down there. Okay, video. Welcome to a strange interpretation of what a Mind Flayer raid might look like, and how this alien hive mind of floating boogeymen would handle some scary looking adventurers. Before I start, there's some interesting points to cover. These monsters rarely engage in battle, and usually employ more subversive tactics. To get servants, normally, they usually talk to community leaders and use blackmail or deep threats for a steady flow of missing persons. They also don't want notoriety. If you know where a Mind Flayer hive is, you are a massive security threat. Mind Flayers essentially experienced a Star Wars scale doomsday in their background, so they all live like the game 60 Seconds where they sit in a bunker waiting for something to change. And the last little note, if they do engage in combat on a full scale, you will not survive. The only way to escape an illithid raid is to get the hell out of there and be lucky. You could call in the Space Marines or the Space Jedi, but they'll both likely just make a buster call and then everyone in the area is dead. So without further ado, let's build up some motivation, setting, and context. For this particular encounter, we'll have a recently created colony of Mind Flayers and their own hive of only a couple hundred. Now, even for a young hive, they'll have slaves, and as I understand it, it's at least a 2 to 1 ratio of flayer to taxpayer. But even at that capacity, they are still starving. If you only have thralls, that's like having a cupboard full of clamshells with no clam meat inside, or a recently purchased bag of Lay's chips. These sweet boys need some cranial meat. So bad, in fact, that we'll make this a surface encounter at an inn. A nice little sardine pack of potential servants, all asleep for the beginning of the raid. Here's another map. Uh, please go support Dungeon Scrawl. It's the best, and I'm really bad with colors. So let's have a party of four level 10 members. We can't have everything go as planned here, so here's our wrench in the gears. Let's give this party names, too. That way this video will be more fun for me. We've got Archer Billy Bob Joe Overalls, Shrimp Fried Bryce the Barbarian, Magnum Dong the Magi with a Black Eye, and Sandra Bullock, known for her roles in films such as Bird Box, The Blind Side, and surprisingly, The Prince of Egypt. The scene is set. The beds are tucked in, so let's get this ball rolling. For a raid of this size, the Hive wouldn't risk more than three illithid commanders and a handful of slaves. Let's do 1d6 Quaggoths and 1d6 Grimlocks. I got six Quaggoths and one crummy Grimlock, but that's alright. So for the introductory round, one of the Mind Flayers will silently levitate around the building, using its dark vision to get a good body count through the windows. In doing so, both the other raid leaders learn the layout, and so do the hundreds of them back at home. Hive minds are fun. They get a good set of two owners downstairs and 13 people upstairs because Shrimp Fried Bryce likes to sleep alone. The rest of them are merchants, with the exception being, I don't know, a, a local and their current night partner. The rooms have been 3D scanned, and the other raid commanders send forward all but two Quaggoths, one bodyguard for each of them remaining behind. The plan now is for the Grimlock to silently open the door before an explosion of psionic energy and Quaggoths enter the building. However, Shrimp Fried Bryce can't be surprised, and Billy Bob Joveralls is a light sleeper. The moment the door opens, the surprise round starts, alerting Shrimp's spidey senses and waking up Ranger Billy Bob. One of them grabs their axe, and the other starts heading downstairs to investigate a midnight intruder. But both are met with our first and strongest raid weapon, Mind Blast. Here's where we might disagree on interpretation, but psionics aren't magic, so an assertion of alien energy I would think can go through walls, and via cone from a levitating asshole, he can hit the second floor with no consequences. So this blast will hit seven of the guests if aimed correctly, and hopefully paralyze most of them. We're crossing our fingers for the barbarian, because if he beats an intelligence saving throw, then there's a god looking after him and my encounter is in trouble. Also, for my editor, if the first blast hits Sandra Bullock, no it doesn't, she's in a different room now. 
I rolled, unbiased, for all seven people that get hit, and going down a pre-written line, six of the victims, including the ranger, are paralyzed. Trim Fried Bryce is both a legend and a testament to how often barbarians screw me over. So as the mind blast goes off, four of the Quaggoths race upstairs with manacles, targeting the paralyzed guests but prioritizing the only armed one. Poor Joe Veralls. We're playing it extra smart here, so they're clamping those cankles too. Top of the main round, the Barbarian screams to rage, which wakes up Magnum Dong and Sandra Bullock. The Ranger and three guests are zip-locked for freshness, and three others just remain paralyzed. This is actually great for the raid, because good ranged attacks are a major weakness to Mind Flayers, but you didn't hear that from me. Some extra rolls because the series is getting complicated and the video is getting long, but nobody kickstarts their nervous system and the Mind Blast isn't back yet. The four Quaggoths gear up to run downstairs with their haul, but Sandra's up first. She uses her police-issued pistol from the movie The Heat, gravely injuring one of the Quaggoths. I'll play nice with the party and assume that by working together, the Barbarian takes out the same Quaggoth that just been shot, which lands the Ranger back on the ground. The rest of these monsters grab their lot and head downstairs, with Magnum Dong and a bit of acid right behind them. He misses his attack, though, because his black eye gives him really bad depth perception. Next round, some of the KO'd guests actually begin to stir, but that's not a huge problem. The outer mind flayers close in, and the one downstairs heads outside with three more merchants than they started with. And one last Quaggoth, but maybe they reproduce quickly, I don't know. Sandra Bullock and Magnum Dong, the Magi with a black eye, end up downstairs first. Well, the Barbarian shatters the shackles with a 1-2 multi-attack. Some bullets and magic missiles fly, not killing anyone, but making progress. Next round, everyone who matters is downstairs. Actually, you know what? Let's have the Mind Flayer who's already used up his blast go straight upstairs and Boogeyman float up to the window for a fast food window style merchant abduction. While he's up, the Quaggoths make it out, the Grimlock's holding the door, and what do you know? Two Mind Blasts in a row. Surprisingly, only Magnum and shrimp fried Bryce went down. Now the moral dilemma happens, because four people are getting away, but so are the ringleaders. What do Sandra Bullock and Billy Bob Joveralls prioritize? The Mind Flayers, the Quaggoths, or the Victims? What kind of video did this become? Send in your answers now. Well, I roll because I, I can't decide. Oh hey, these idiots picked the Mind Flayers. So managing to get outside, having suffered two bursts of damage and with an average of 22 damage each, the Ranger is lucky to still be moving. Sandra Bullock is okay though, she took a feat. New round, the Barbarian is down but the Wizard just freed his own scrawny muscles. A pair of arrows and a pair of bullets fly at the levitating creep who actually just got his Mind Blast back and managed to survive all four shots. Because unless they land a critical shot, they can't take him down, he's got 70 hit points. But unless Unless they fail their own saving throws, he can't take them down. After the rolls are made, Sandra Bullock is unstoppable, and the Ranger has Poo Brain now. The Barbarian has it too, but that's normal. Next round, the Grimlock races up to haul Billy Bob's unconscious body off, only to get absolutely murked by the Black-Eyed Magi. Shooting some final standoff bullets, another Quaggoth goes down, bringing the number of bodies stolen back down to three. That is, until one of the bodyguards picks the merchant back up. At this point, we have three Mind Flayers, one injured with a merchant in its arms, four Quaggoths left, three with commoners, and three dead servants with an unconscious ranger. Sounds kind of like a failed raid, doesn't it? But let's look at the full haul of these Mind Flayers. We have four meals collected using three commanders, a full understanding of the building structure owned by now terrified commoners, and experience in fighting the party. What they lost was a crappy Grimlock, two Quaggoths that failed to do their job, and a currently blown cover by three to four adventurers. But Mind Flayers don't lose. If the party tries to chase them, they are dead. Literally no question about it, the entire hive mind of a couple hundred Mind Flayers watched the entire fight. Which means they'll likely either meet you halfway, or if you try to sleep at the tavern, you're gonna play a quick two-round firefight, where the second wave is 60 floating octopus men blasting you with math questions until you die. So there you have it. Hopefully this video, uh, man, I don't know, I had fun. I gave Sandra a gun. That's enough for one video.